My name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine, and today's topic is cleaning the mirror. You may have heard, very likely you have, that everything in life is a mirror of you. Any given thing that I receive, um, as a general rule, I like to weigh inside myself and be like, is that true for me? I don't like to arbitrarily take things as truth because they've been spoken to me. I consider this age the misinformation information age. Everyone's online and a lot of false information is available online, just like a lot of false information is available in your textbooks. It's totally U.S. history class is biased to the U.S. history they want you to receive. It's not talking about, um, you know, all of the egregious crimes that have where we moved natives off the land to get the uranium out of the earth. We're not talking about that in a history <laughs> class, you know. So I personally love the truth. And I've taken most things that I've received as a means to like, let me evaluate, is this true for me? And there are ways in which I found this statement to be true. It's like, yes, that is a mirror. Maybe you've had some divine friends. Maybe you've had some cosmic interactions in which it just really felt like life was reflecting back to you who you are. There are ways in which I've thought to myself, this is, wait, in this instance, it's not true. And... I want to point today to how it viably could still be true and just talk about some aspects of cleaning this mirror and how we clean the mirror and when we clean the mirror and what we can anticipate when that happens. So the first aspect I want to talk about is the mirror itself. Many of you may have experienced uh, the empath and the narcissist relationship. And so we might ask like, well, how does this come together? These two people, they actually are a perfect yin yang example. You know, one is completely self-absorbed, only ever thinking of themselves. They think they are the sun, but they're actually a black hole that's collapsing everything around them due to their lack of balance with having any outward focus. And the empath loves to give. Most empaths that I've met, they are on the bottom of the totem pole. They don't love to give to themselves. They love to give to others. Why? Because they have emotional intelligence and emotional sensitivity to others, which means that uh, when they look upon and engage with a narcissist, they're looking at the opposite of their personality turned to 100. And the narcissist is looking at the empath and seeing the opposite of their personality turn to 100, right? So the empath, the overgiver, the constantly thinking of others is one side of the coin. The narcissist and the overly thinking of the self and never thinking of others is the other side of the coin. And it is the same coin. And life is, is an opportunity in our evolution, in the evolution of a living tree to walk the rim of the coin or to come into balance. This is one of the things that awakened for me on the shamanic path. We, the goal on every topic is not to be on one side or the other, because I very rarely experience someone being strongly connected to one side of the coin, you know, liberal, you know, conservative, like whatever it is, whatever the top, pick any topic that has two ways of being viewed. Um, It often creates opposition, argument, righteousness. So when we walk the rim of the coin without attachment and in a more neutral mindset and allowing all coins to exist and all sides of coins to exist, we don't have as much need to argue for our righteousness all the time. So when when I look at every narcissist I've ever dated, first of all, let me just point out here, we all are a little bit narcissistic. We have egos. The ego is a tool. It is a gift. It is an opportunity for us to label things and discern what we want in the garden of our lives. Oh, I don't want to work with cantaloupe seeds. I want to work with, you know, bird of paradise seeds or whatever it is. We get to choose the garden of our mind, the garden of our lives. And the ego allows us to label and discern. The challenge is the ego often judges. So as I have had many relationships with narcissists, I have recognized wait a minute, they are my mirror. They are the same coin. Because on an inner level, Heather spent a lot of her life ignoring herself. So on the scale of self-esteem, I was at a zero. I was the lowly worm under the feet of humanity, not even equal to humans. If I got any esteem, it would be like, well, I'm at least the level of a girl next door, some regular person. <laughs> you know, like I just, no esteem. Like, it's like... 
And, you know, no sense of pridefulness. My mom wasn't a very prideful woman, right? But on the scale of the narcissist, in which it's just like all about them, me, me, I, I, oh, look at how riveting I am. Guess what, narcissist? You're not as fascinating as you think you are. And you're kind of an energetic drain. But somewhere in that, even being low self-esteem, low self-worth, worm under the foot of humanity, that extreme expression is relatively narcissistic. How superior do you have to be to be so distinct that you're beneath everyone around you? There's a specialness in that. Ooh, how special am I? I'm so unlovable. So, so there's this component in which the narcissist is showing you what it's like to put the self first because you are 100% out of balance by constantly putting others first. And that causes people to take advantage of you. It causes you to have no boundaries. So you'll consistently find these things to be true with the empath. And in that same vein, if the narcissist could ever get outside of thinking of themselves, I don't often see it happen. The likelihood I find mathematically relatively low on that. But if they could, they could learn from their empath that they've drawn into them that they're out of balance by 100% too. And the way we come into balance is by thinking of others. Same coin, different extremes. Because the topic is in extremes, when that coin comes up into your life, it's constantly reflecting to you, hey, uh, time to come into balance. Life is always incessantly, eternally asking you questions. Who are you in relationship to this topic? Who are you in relationship to this topic? Who are you in relationship to this topic? And there was a period where I would wear a thick rubber band on my wrist and I wrote in Sharpie on it, WWLD. And it was my reminder to constantly ask me what would love do now? Because who I want to be in relationship to all topics is love and form. Now that's a tr tricky situation there because true love and form is balanced. It's not at a hundred. It's not at zero. It recognizes that love is what we are, and everyone has right to it, including the self and including all others. And we don't have to be so judgmental all the time. So there's this component where I'm looking at the WWLD of it all, what would love do now, where I was really having to figure out and work out how do I come into balance with myself on this topic? Um, how do I consider the self more? How do I move Heather up the totem pole, as it were? How, why am I expecting the narcissist to put me first? <laughs> They already, you know, or even the alcoholic, they're already married to alcohol. They don't, they're, I'm a ghost in the relationship, right? It's my job to put me first. Come on, 50 foot queenie, straighten your crown and get up off the ground, dust off your knees and think again about how you're going to hold this prize called divine love in the light. So that's on me. I found, uh, you know, my highest prayer is always to serve divinity, but to me, divinity is love. It's the light of love, light of truth. And so my highest focus for a long time revolved around my own happiness. I've talked about my chronic depression, suicidal ideation. Many that watch this video, you, like I, will have PTSD from trauma you've experienced, high anxiety, depressive aspects of life in which things feel really, it's difficult to find a joyous thought. I have great empathy and compassion for that. I understand it well. I mean, and what I found is that my mental health, my mental health is up to me. There's this tendency to wait for life to bring you something that's worthy of feeling excited about. And I'm the one making the choices moment by moment, my, my moment as life asks, what would love do now? You're made of love. What would love do now? What would love do now? How are you going to walk in balance on this topic? Because the ego is going to want to label and judge it. So, you know, not that the ego is the enemy, its job is to label, don't necessarily need to judge what isn't for you. It is your job to steward the gate and be like, get out of the garden. It doesn't work for you. Don't have to judge those that leave your garden though. So there was, there've been many times in my life, I've been recently well blessed to date an amazing human. And he and I were talking about getting off of sugar. And I've actually done that many times in my life where I get off of sugar and, and then, you know, like any human, it's like, oh, let's have some sugary treats nonstop for three days. Because <laughs> balance is a tricky topic. You know, it's a tricky topic. Um, if you've ever used a balance board, you know, on a physical level, how true that is. And so when I get off of sugar, I would be doing that because my highest priority under serving divinity and the way I serve divinity is to serve and be a steward of my happy, my happiness, my mental wellness, my emotional health. 
that I am the steward of. And sugar is an immunosuppressant and a depressant. When your immune system is compromised and your health is compromised, typically you're not as happy. Wellness includes happiness. And also taking a depressant, not the happiest choice you can make. And sugar is in a, all kinds of things and marketed all the time. Boop, 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 probably you want a sugary treat. It's like, get out of here with this garbage. <laughs> so when I would get off of sugar, it inevitably would always turn the next day for me. It would be like, we're having Sally's birthday party. And now it's, and now we're serving Heather's favorite treat. Life is constantly asking you, what will you do now? What will you do now? What will you do now? In today's topic of cleaning the mirror, there's an aspect in which when we choose to recognize our mirrors and go, actually, that is the same coin. (laughs) This is the same coin. The coin of the topic is sugar. Where do we truly get our sweetness from in life? Happiness. And I've said, I'm going to choose to get my sweetness, my happiness from actual joy and caring and being a steward for my temple. And life will always ask you questions. And usually when you try to get a fast moving train called the yeses I've been giving life on the topic of sugar, let's say, to a no, and you try to move the tracks, you may find it takes several attempts to get that fast moving train on a new track of thought. And what life will do is it will ask you, are you sure you want to move tracks? Because remember that sugar train, so, so sweet. And it's you have to be like, no, I said no. And it can be frustrating because there's a part of you that may just be like, okay, I give in, you know? And every human has the ability to never consume sugar again. If somebody came to you and said that everything that you love and hold dear will be tortured and then die if you don't get off sugar right now, you get off. If they told you you're going to die if you eat one more grain of sugar, you would get, you would get off of sugar. Uh, <laughs> you know, what we really want is the sweetness in life. There's a great quote from Yogananda's sister. I'm not going to quote it exactly, but she said, be like the wise ant, you know, that goes through the sand and sugar in a glass and pulls only the sugar out and not the sand. And by that analogy, what I mean is the sweetness. Be like the wise ant that looks for the sweetness and that which truly holds the virtue of what you need. The sweetness you really need is happiness. The sweetness you really need is health and is balance. Be not deluded to be chewing on sand, you know, or false foundations, things you can't build upon. So so there is an asking that life is always doing. And life is always asking you, is this the mirror you would like? And when the narcissist comes into your life, the mirror is asking, do you want to be the lowly worm? Because that's the coin you're on and you're doing lowly worm at 100 and they're doing narcissist at 100. Did you, you, do you want to do lowly worm again? It's totally available to you, you know. I am an overgiver, you know. It's It's a constant issue. It shows up in all my Akashic Records readings. And why? Because... A lot of my attention is around me taking my last breath because I constantly bury the dead, because I constantly grieve and constantly am dead, 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 dead. You know, so I'm always waiting every four minutes to get another death call. I think a lot. I think more about death than almost any given topic about who I want to be at the moment of death. Who is that woman? Who do I want her to be? What choices do I want her to have made? One thing that's been true for her is I've, I've given her permission to infinitely take risks. This Heather, this quote unquote future right now moment, Heather, that is about to die. I've always taken risks. I've been risky with love. I've been risky. And that's because I'm not going to have regret when I go to the grave. I will have chosen to step into it all and express it all. There's another component around, you know, taking time to really look at my mirror and when I clean the mirror, I might be cleaning it for a while. Like, I'm going to get off sugar. And life's going to go, are you sure? 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 Because you're acting like your joy comes through your consumerism and your sugar. Are you sure? And I might have to keep pushing on that door. I said, no, I'm going to shut this door. I'm going to move tracks of this fast moving train. So today I'm asking you, is there any cleaning you're doing on your mirror? Don't give up. Keep cleaning. Make your new answer for your new path consistent. And then consider, are there any mirrors in front of you on the same side of the coin that you're ready to have be different for you? You can always subscribe to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube. Like and comment there. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have a blessed day.